Good afternoon. Uh, first, my deepest condolences and to Mrs. Cheney and the Cheney family. Thank you so much for sharing, Coach, for all these years and all the sacrifices you made. And I am humbled that you would ask me to say a few words. I think anyone that's ever played for Coach will know this. There was a couple things that we always tried to do. Stay off his radar screen in practice. That was practically my major. And to try to make him proud. And I certainly hope I can make him proud today. But I first, I wanted to tell a quick story about Coach's brilliance and how his mind thinks. You know, he used to say, never pass up a teaching moment. You may never get it back. So the team was flying back from UCLA, heading to Boston to play UMass. We had a layover in Chicago. Anytime we had a layover or downtime in an airport, Howard Evans and Tim Perry would make a beeline for the arcade, play Miss Pac-Man. If you've ever been to O'Hare, it's, it's pretty big, and I, I don't think they realized just how far away they wandered from the gate. Fast forward a little bit, they were starting to reboard our plane. No sign of Howard or Tim. Over the intercom, the lady was boarding the plane, people that need assistance, first class, and so on. Still no sign of our point guard and our shot blocker. The team starts milling around, talking, looking around, looking around the, around the concourse. Finally, Coach realizes something's just not right. He asks, he asks our manager, Rob Jones, what's going on. Rob had to tell him. As soon as, as soon as Rob told him, Coach jumped up, urging our team and the last few passengers, strangers, to get on the plane. He's practically herding us down the jetway. He gets onto the plane. He's making an announcement. Sit down. Fasten your seatbelts. He's urging the flight attendants to shut the door. He's yelling up to the cockpit, to the pilots, put this thing in reverse. Let's go. Back out of the gate. He wanted to leave him in Chicago, and we did. He knew the psychological effect of being left behind, not knowing the punishment and having to think about it for four or five hours would be gut-wrenching. So they arrive in Boston on the next flight. Rob had to stay back with a rental car, pick him up, take him to the hotel. And all along the way, Howie and Tim, is Coach mad? How mad is he? What, what was he saying? And Rob is like, yeah, he's mad. So they arrive at the hotel, and, and Slick Howie says, Rob, go around to the back of the hotel. Go around the, the back entrance. So he does. They get out of the car. They go in through the back. Guess who's sitting there waiting for him? Coach. He had a few choice words. And I think they went right up to the room. And, uh, you know, he never missed an opportunity. The first time I saw Coach was probably 40 years ago. I was in high school. I was at a, went to a Palestra doubleheader. At halftime, Coach was strangling the, the coach from the other team. <laughs> True story. The last time I saw him was January 26th. Uh, me and a bunch of my teammates had a video call. And after some laughs and some stories, he said some things I don't think any of us will ever forget. He said, guys, remember what I taught you. Always stay together. No matter what happens, stay together. What a great 40-year ride it's been for me and my teammates. 
Has anyone in here ever used the words winning is an attitude? Or maybe how you start is how you finish? How about success has a narrow doorway? I'm guessing you have, and probably some others as well. Have you ever told the youth team you coach, you have to have teeth in your belly, only for them to look at you, not understanding what the heck you just said? He changed a lot of lives. And coach, some of coach is within all of us, every one of us. I've even heard some accounts of people that never met coach yet they talk about how he changed their lives. Whether it's the sayings we use, discipline, time management, being a perfectionist, or the countless other qualities, too lengthy the list. We all have some of Coach in us. And you know, Coach never took anything for granted either. I remember one selection Sunday we gathered as a team to watch the show. We had, we had won the Atlantic 10 that year, so we were getting an automatic bid. Temple was the very last team they called that day. And towards the end, Coach was pacing, hands in his hair. He was convinced the NCAA may have changed the rules on automatic bids, and Al Schreier didn't tell him. Patience was not a virtue, maybe. As a player, I think I speak for all of us when I say the one trait, the one thing that we all talk about is how Coach showed us how much he loved us. It didn't matter what we did in practice or a game. When we crossed over the line, at the end of the day, we knew he loved us, and we loved him. It didn't stop when our playing career ended. Communication was a must. If, we ha if, if Coach hadn't heard from us in a while, we'd get a phone call. I can, I can almost hear it in my head now. Miss Davis, get me Nate. Or Maria, get Mark on the phone. And that's how it was. Coach never thought of himself. It was always about others. And as the years and decades went by, the conversation turned to our kids. Whenever we would talk to him and ask him how he was feeling, he ignored us and wanted to hear about our families. What are our kids doing? How are they doing in school? And he wanted to know about whatever sport they played. When I would talk to him, he demanded I pass the phone to my kids. And he would ask my daughter about volleyball. And he would instruct my son not to have any turnovers. No turnovers, Jack, he said. I, I would hear it through the phone from across the room. The number of lives he changed cannot be calculated. At Temple alone, he coached over 100 players. Each and every one's lives have been changed. Now add Sayre Junior High School Gratz and Cheney State and the number of players' lives directly impacted is that much greater. And if he changed our lives, if he changed my life, that means he changed my kids' lives. And in some cases, you could even say grandkids' lives now. The downstream impact will be never-ending. He taught through life lessons, and we were lucky enough to be his students. He was relentless in helping those in need, and the world is better for it. Let's continue to honor his memory by passing on those lessons and continuing those deeds. I love you, Coach. Thank you.